Hiya guys and welcome back to Aids Workshop and the Webster engine part three already. Uh, we seem to have been piling out the episodes on this one and I've still got loads of clips in the can ready for uploading or editing and uploading. Anyway, part three. So uh, this was filmed a little while ago when I still had the head coat cold so uh, apologies for the sniffing again. Um, but uh, it's just the beginning of this video and then from then on uh, it, it stops anyway. Okay, so that's good news. So a few bits and bobs will come in and you'll see them sort of coming in as I work through these clips. It was filmed over, you know, a week or something like that. Uh, various bits and bobs I was doing. So let's get straight on with the video then, shall we? So I've just blank up the last base of this block. I uh, haven't deburred it yet. So this is the base plate. So I machined the ends, machined the bottom, machined the top. It's blocked up. It's way oversized compared to drawing, but I'm happy with that. So I've taken the vise off the mill bed. Um, I'm just tramming. This plate in onto the bed. And as you can see, pretty much nailed it. Uh, a little bit down this end, just just, uh, just nip that at far end where I started. Just a touch there, only finger tight for the moment. And put that to the same reading right so we're on 25 on the clock there oh drop down the south straight away so I got it all set up um, picked up on this corner now this is the top of the plate. My countersinks for my bolts, importantly the 5mm bolts, are going to be on the back base. I'll do those later. So what I'm looking at is one 5mm clearance hole uh, for the cylinder head and then four other holes up here. I have marked them out but I did it with a view to reversing it but I thought that's just leaving myself wide open to mess it up. So. I've got a figure here, I'm on the edge, I'm going to leave everything correct, I'm going to have extra material this side, but I'm going to leave this edge as datum, this edge I've actually, it's supposed to be 1.688, but I've set the zero at 2 inch, but called it 1.688, so first hole is 813,000, so I'll just come to that, and lock Y. X is already locked. So first hole in the base plate. Okay, so my counter sinking bit for five mil screws let me just dig it out and I've written on the boxes what they should be so yeah point two so 5.2 hole I'm gonna need to be able to get the pilot of this M5 counter boring bit in so 5.2 drill let me grab it I wasn't prepared uh, I need to put my head up a bit Okay, that'll do. You might be a tech fast. Right, there's a couple of weird holes after this which are going to be great fun to do. Okay. So, uh, let's brush. Get a good brush on the go. Let's get rid of all this. 
So there's a hole up close to this one, which is, oh, boat has it gone on my phone. 1.953 from the original datum. Let me go back to absolute. And let me come back to 1.953 of the original. 1.9. Three, and this hole is dimensioned from the end at 5.281 uh, I need to take 1.688 from that because it's 5.281 from the end whereas I set a zero there so 5.281 minus 1.688 so, let me so the dimension, as it turned out, 3.593 and uh, in X from the very end, or from that hole. <laughs> and this dimension was 1.953. So these are um, 632s and 3s. Lost me brush, there we are. I think this is to bolt down the spring. Yeah, it is. It's, it's the little tapped hole in the base that bolts down the spring that holds the cam follower or um, cam arm, pivoting cam arm. So, okay, let me try and explain. There's a long rod that runs on a cam here which is pivoted on the side of this plate here somewhere. Underneath it is a spring which holds the end, this end of the arm up against the cam uh, out of a piece of spring steel and this is the, or it will be, the mounting bolt that holds down that piece of spring steel. So. Weirdly, it's not on the same centre as that bolt hole, but, yeah, whatever. Um, so that's that one. Now, there's another one out here somewhere. Let me have a look. Uh, 4.625. I think this holds a condenser down. I might be wrong. Let me move across to 4.625. That's it. And its dimension from the end 5.438. Okay, so back to the calculator. Um, so what I need is 5.438 minus 1.688. I'll have to do that with a calculator. I'm going to probably do that now in two seconds. Uh, I got my phone open. Ooh. So, uh, 5.438 minus, you're probably there before me, guys, 1.688 equals 3.75. Okay, well, that's easy. Three and three quarter inches. Okay, 3.75, so, so let me go back to my drawing, see if that looks right. So it's just beyond the two holes. Uh, I've got to be careful here. Photos, yes, yes, that's right. And according to the drawing, that hole is, again, the 632. I mean, it could be M4. It, 632 is approximately an M3.5. So, I'm risking M3s. It's, it, you know. 
on the grounds that I can always open it up to M4. I haven't got three M3 and a half traps or bolts or anything like that, and I don't intend to go down that route. Okay. So I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. Let me make sure I got them all. So those four, five, six, seven. I have all the holes in the base plate I'm going to need. Well, for now. Um, I may, I'm may. i going to have a fuel tank up here somewhere, so I'm going to have more holes in it going forward. But that's the basic holes in the engine. Original drawing shows a great big chunk cut out of here, but that's where I want to put the fuel tank. So, okay, that's that. Um, that's the whole set out on datum, I hope, <laughs> uh, for bolting everything down. So while I got it set up with the four clamps, I've just removed the back two. Oh, my tripod's getting bumped by the carriage. Let me just move out the way. Okay. So while it's set up here, I'm going to fly cut this face, which is the visual face. Uh, well, fly cut, machine it. I haven't got the range to fly cut in one pass, so I'm going to do a series of them. Uh, so I'm going to move across in like 30 mil steps. So once I do the next pass, um, I can put the back clamps back on, remove the front clamps, so on and so forth. So, quite pleased with how it came out. Uh, yeah, it'll do. <laughs> so a little bit unorthodox. Um, putting chamfers around the outside of the plate. Um, so I've got a fly cutter. It's not just the surfaces. On the edge of the fly cutter, I've got an approach angle ground. I'm actually running it in, it in reverse here, but uh, that doesn't matter. That's just the way I grab the tool. And the leading edge of the fly cutter has a 45 degree edge on it with clearance. So I'm just running. I've set the block back against the parallel. You can see it there in the groove. And I've locked Y in this direction, locked my Z axis, and I'm just going across in one hit, putting this chamfer on. So, of course, when I want to do the other side, I've actually already done the opposite side. When I want to do the ends, to get exactly the same chamfer, I just clean up, take the block off, 90 degree it, push it up against that parallel, and run the same cut again. So that will give me an equal chamfer on all four sides. So, uh... When I get to the end of this cut, I'll just show you the cutter. You probably can't see it, but it's spinning at the moment. But uh, bring you in a bit. And as you can see, put in a 45 degree on the edge of there. Just... So just setting up for another face now. Push the part hard back against that parallel in the groove. Let's just set up a couple of little clamps, just loosely for now. Okay, pushing back firmly against the back stop as it were, lock that clamp, lock that clamp, and as you can see here on the tool, here's the 45 degree on the end of the tool, so that's coming round, obviously it's going in this direction, I'm running in reverse, and it's chopping out, so I'm climb milling this. Let me just come off the edge a bit. Okay, fire it back up. Off to go again. So, basically, walk away, let that run. No change in settings, no nothing. Just, uh, just while that's running. Um, good news. Packet of M3 taps has turned up, high speed steel taps. Uh, bought online, I think, uh, set, I don't know, 9.99, something like that. Anyway, so I now have a set of M3 taps uh, in the workshop here. So uh, hopefully we don't snap these ones. So I flip the plate over, um, and I'm doing the counter bores for the M5 bolts. So I've got a stop set, my depth stop is set on my quilt. I'll just get that pilot engaged. Oops, can't find it. <laughs> okay, so I've set a zero, but 
basically in 5.1 angle egg. There, and I've hit the depth stop. So. A little bit of WD on the cutter and on the part. That's it, 5.1. So, uh, that's the counterbores on the underside of the plate that are going to take the bolts that hold everything to the top side. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I thought just as well to do this before I put the vice back on while I've got a nice big table area to work on. Uh, just makes life a lot easier. I don't often take the vice off in its entirety. Uh, but... Today I have, I think a little countersink in those might be a good idea. Uh, got the wrong collar. Okay, I'll countersink them while I'm at it. I'm sure you don't want to uh, see me put a champer on the top of these holes. So my two side plates are the wrong thickness to, uh, per drawing. They should be 313. So, uh, yeah, I tried play cutting this over. Well, I did actually do it. But uh, this end was vibrating a little bit, so I just put a backup vice and just clamped it loose while it was still located in that one. Clamped the vice down, nipped it. That should give it support on the end there and stop the chattering. Um, yeah, I've got the fly cutter set out to wide enough to cover the whole face in one hit. So I'll do this side. I'm just cleaning this side up. Um, there wasn't a great deal to come off, I think about 20,000 in total. Um, in fact, let's just find out. I forgot to uh, actually make a note of it. So I think the thickness has got to be 313. And they're 318. Okay, so it's 5,000. So, uh, yeah, that one's going to have just a lick left on it. Just a couple of thou on the other side, I would imagine. Because that's a 3,000 pass. Hopefully this cleans up nicely. The first pass was literally a touch off. Just to uh, show where I am at with it, um, I've just loosely assembled, well, taken up all the bolts, but I've just assembled what we've got so far. So we've got the cylinder head bracket, um, we've got the cylinder, and we've got the two carriers and the base plate. So these two carriers will be carrying the big end shaft, should we call it, the main main shaft, the crank shaft. Um, so the drawing shows the crank as being, I believe, 516 diameter, um, 313? 313 diameter. I think I'm actually going to change it, go for 8 mil, which is, you know, there's nothing in it, but... I can buy 8mm drill rod, silver steel, or one, whatever you want to call it, really easily. Um, and I can get metric bearings really easily. Well, you know, a lot easier than I can Imperial. So I'm thinking of getting some flanged bearings to go in here with an 8mm bore. Uh, what's the biggest sort of size I could go? Well, that's about half inch. Uh, so if I went for something with an 8mm bore, maybe 19mm OD on the max, maybe a flanged bearing on there. Um, don't know whether to put them from the inside out or the outside in, I don't know, depends on what spaces we do. Um, so yeah, I mean that's, I've got options if I use 8mm and I can get bearings. That'll save oil cups, all the rest of it, the bearings will be sealed bearings. So I can forget lubrication for those. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's my thinking at the moment. Um, piston, obviously. Crank, I'm going to do a counterbalance on the crank rather than just a straight piece of bar, as it was shown. I've got some needle roller bearings for the uh, big end, shall we say. We call these the main journals for the big end. I've got some small needle roller bearings for that. Um, I think... Yeah, I've got a bag of them. Let me have two seconds. Let me just dig them out. Oh, there we are. Yeah, I got a little bag of a uh, little bag of bearings there. I think they're six mil bore. 
might be quarter. You know, I can't remember what I ordered now, but that will be my big end bearing needle roller. I think if on the end of the crank, uh, or the crank pin, I can put an oil hole so that I, and a cross drilled hole into the shaft so that I can inject oil in through the end and lubricate this bearing uh, on the, the big end. These will be sealed bearings. Um, camshaft. Again, I might run the camshaft on a needle bearing as well. Um, I haven't got any that would do that. I think that it's quarter. You know what, I could even, I could even use one of these. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, um, what to make next? I don't know. Um, as I'm filming this, episode two hasn't gone up yet. Um, so I haven't got the answer how you want me to do it. But, you know, whether it's all polished or gleaming or whether it's just make it run. So, uh, yeah, as I, as obviously as I'm filming and playing about here in the shed. So, thoughts. Let's see if I've got... I haven't got any drill rod. I need to order some 8mm drill rod. I'll just order a standard length of that. It's normally about a foot long. Um, and I shall see what I can get bearings wise. So a little sidetrack. Um, my bearings have come in. Um, and they're 16 OD. So I've just got the two plates, referencing the bottom as a datum, picked back up on the centre hole, and it did work out 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, so I've just drilled it out 15.25 while I stepped it up. Um, so 16mm reamer is the... Uh, luckily, I do have one. Well, not too fast here. Bit of WD. Let's have it. So these bearings are going to be loctited in, so I think to size with a 16mm reamer should be fine. Okay, that's through the pair. So what that does do, because I've done them as a pair from the base and the ends are lined up, is, well not guarantee, but I've got a much better chance of having those two holes smack on in line height wise and end to end wise in relation to the base plate. Um, so that when I run a shaft through them on the two bearings, there's a great chance that we're going to have good alignment. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Um, so I'm going to pop this reamer out now. Now, this plate on the top, I've just put a toolmaker's clamp on just to make sure that they're solidly locked together as I'm holding them both in the vise. Um, these bearings have a little have a shoulder. I want to put the shoulders on the inside faces of the two uh, plates. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my boring head out and just do a little rebate in the top of both of them. Um, I'll do this one while it's set up here now. And then I'll have to flip this one over to do it on the other side, the other side being the inside. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to get things moving along. Um, and as I say, the bearings come in. These are deep groove flanged bearings. I think they're 16 mil OD and 8, yes, 8 mil. Uh, internal so I went for 8 mil instead of the 5 16ths or whatever it was that the drawing said but no worries I just make everything 8 mil that's fitting on it so uh, machine the first one did the undercut bearing fit in there lovely after a bit of a deeper um, flush to the surface so uh, other side here I flip the part pick back up on the reamed hole I've got a depth stop set. I've just put the diameter setting back to where it was. And that is it. Now, let me just pop that bearing back out of there. Make sure that... Make sure that bit's in there. Good bit of clearance on the undercut for the uh, rebate. There's no point in making it accurate tight. Um, it's the 16 that holds the bearing correct. So that's basically it. That's the uh, inside edge of this plate and the inside edge of this plate both being able to take a bearing. Okay and yeah so um, deep groove bearings 16 OD 8 internal I think they're 6 wide works treat.
well, as I usually say, I think that's about it. Hello. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Shall I try that again? Okay, maybe I'll leave it in. So, as I was trying to say before my phone went ding, uh, right on cue, as they tend to do, I shouldn't really have it in the workshop with me, but I'm using it for the drawings. Anyway, I'm digressing. I think that's about it for this one, guys. Um, so, yeah, we've pretty much done most of the work on the base plate. Um, the question I asked in episode two, um, do I make it beautiful, all anodized, and all the rest of it? Uh, I've still got replies coming in, um, and it's pretty much a mixed bag of yes and no at the moment. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm undecided. I think there, there's so many varying answers that it, I think I'm just going to have to make my own decision as to which way I go. But even if it's not anodized or anything like that, it's still gonna, I'm still going to make it look nice. It's still all going to be polished up and look nice, or as nice as it can. So, anyway, that's the answer to that one. Anyway, I'm digressing again. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.